Hello there, Quicksilver Slash, and today I have for you a review Tier 7 British Premium Cruiser, the Belfast. And I was so excited to get this ship because I've watched some of the replays, I'd seen what she was going to have, and I've absolutely loved the British Cruiser line. I've been having amazing games in them. I really think they work for me, that kind of cloak and dagger, get up close to a guy, pop the smoke, rely on friendly spotting, but just do massive damage with a lot of AP shells. Now the Belfast, obviously, I'm assuming most of you know this, brings a couple little differences to the main line. The first being, she has HE. The second, and probably one of the best parts, is she also has radar and doesn't give up her smoke to carry the radar. But I'll get all into that a little more as we go through this. So rather than compare her to all of the tier 7 ships that are out there, I'm just going to do a direct comparison against the Fiji because they're pretty similar, both British, kind of same play style. And, well, unfortunately I don't have the Atlanta, and I do feel the Atlanta still has her place. I don't have the Flint yet, which I'll get in about 10 days when this season's over. So I'm just going to put her up against the Fiji because it's a ship you can get to if you like the Fiji's playstyle, you're probably going to like the Belfast. And that's really my reasoning behind just this one-on-one -on -one comparison and not looking at the Japanese or the Americans or the Russians. So right off the bat, armor, well, nothing to really speak of on the uh, British ships. 13 to 114 millimeters, and well, I guess she does have a little more armor than the Fiji. But let's find out where that 114 is. It's, well, it is the belt. So, you know, you might have a little more luck, but you're still going to get overmatched by battleship shells. So you're really relying on the fact that it is so low in the water to do a lot of the protecting for you. As far as hit points, she has 35,700 compared to the Fiji's 31,400, but the Belfast loses the Repair Party consumable. And the first couple games I played the Belfast, I really missed having that consumable on these lower tier cruisers because you take a big hit and in the Fiji you can just jam T because part of the British specialty is they can repair, I believe it's 30% of heavy damage. So if you take a huge chunk, it's not permanently gone because the Brits get to repair just a portion of that. So without that, the Belfast health starts to look more on par with the Fiji's, because maybe you're not going to get to use all of your repair parties, but if you have one full repair party and burn through it, basically puts them on par for total hit points. As far as torpedo reduction, 7%, and beats out the Fiji because she's got none. Their guns are very similar. They're both the same Mark 23. Uh, 152 millimeters, seven and a half second reload, 25.7 degree, uh, 180 turn time, 130 meter dispersion, and that is with the dispersion module fitted. And there's the HE, 2100 damage, but only a 9% chance of fire. So I have found myself using it when a battleship isn't giving me the best angle to their superstructure, I'll try to light a fire. But the second they turn on, even if they're at range, I swap back to that AP and rely on it. And you can see the shell, it's the 6CRH Mark IV, which is the same as the Fiji's. Uh, one thing I've heard about the Leander, which I think is available on some of the other servers, not on NA, at least I haven't seen it, is the Leander apparently doesn't have access to the uh, improved British AP shell. So it's nice that the Belfast still has that same one. And her AP and HE velocities are the same. And really good firing range at 15.4 kilometers. Especially considering one of the modules she gets to fit. The secondaries, not a lot to speak of there. There are these standard British dual barrel 102 millimeter secondaries. But they are dual purpose and factor into her AA rating of 55 compared to the 46 that my Fiji has. It's a little bit better. And 
I found the British Cruiser's AA to be pretty reliable. You're going to get some kills, but not having the defensive fire consumable definitely hurts your role as an anti-air cruiser. As far as maneuverability goes, a rating of 64, top speed 32.5 knots, 680 meter turning radius, which is almost 100 meters more than the Fiji's, and a slightly slower rudder shift with the same modules fitted in both. So she gets a little bit bigger and as a result a more cumbersome to go through the turns. Now concealment is definitely where she pulls ahead. See 68 detectability 9.9 .9 by C compared to the 11.2 of the Fiji. And this is pretty much all because of that one extra module. You get the fifth slot, I believe it is, and you can put concealment in there, which when you put in a good commander, where's my commander with concealment, that drops it to 8.7, which is a very important number, and I'm going to show you why. When we go into consumables, if you look at your radar, radar range is 8.49, so just call it 8.5. So basically if a destroyer drives in and detects you, and you get detected by something that you can't see, you pop the radar and they're more than likely in that detection range, because odds are with them only seeing you a couple seconds earlier, they haven't had a chance to turn out and they're going to close that 200 meter difference in the turn or you just turn in and close them. And I've used that to some pretty great effectiveness uh, against a number of DDs. And then you still have the hydroacoustic. So combining these two, you can do a lot of work. Uh, the rest of the consumables are pretty standard. You have the smoke generators. They're good for a 103 seconds with 160 reload, which means you've only got about 50 seconds of time, well, 57 seconds of time between smoke screens. So you can very carefully manage that using an island. You know your smoke's about to run up, back up a bit, conceal yourself behind an island. Okay, consumables off cooldown, pull forward that bit, get all your guns back in the action, and pop your smoke. As far as upgrades, this is the standard setup I have on all my British ships. Main battery one, aiming modifications one, damage control one, rudder shift to just help boost her maneuverability because they accelerate so fast. Combine that with a good rudder shift, you're going to dodge lots of torpedoes. And then the top of it is concealment mod one. Being able to mount this on a tier 7 is amazing and to really make this ship good you need a five point captain because otherwise the radar starts to use lose a bit of its effectiveness everything just gets a little softer on her but if you've got a good captain and this isn't one i had been saving up this is the guy that i've just trained up working my way up to the edinburgh uh so if you run those dragon flags if you've got some of them you can definitely get your commander trained up pretty quickly and if not and you buy the Belfast right now there is a mission on for increased commander experience where is she Belfast mission is it gonna show me odd well it's not showing me what it is but I, I know it's plus 100% to your commander so you can quickly train up a commander now as far as the skills go once again, it's my Edinburgh captain, and it's going to be the captain that I use in this. As much as I would love to have that increased chance of fire with these HE shells, I'm not going to make a dedicated captain for the Belfast. The big point of having premium ships is making money and training up captains for other ships. So maybe once I'm through the Minotaur and I've got all my other captains kind of up to par, I might start making a dedicated one with the demolition expert, but until then, just gonna stick to my Edinburgh's captain. Anyways, that's enough talking in port. Let's hop into a couple snippets of games and uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about with some of these skills. Well, in the end, I've decided to go with just one game because I just played this one and it really demonstrates kind of all the points I wanted to get across through a bunch of different snippets and really one of them, the time 
never started, so the whole replay was pretty messed up. So I'm hoping this one works a little bit better, though I'm not entirely sure since my gun position seems to be really off. There we go. I've got it coming forward finally. I don't know what it is with some replays, but they just seem to break. Like, nothing changes the way I play the game, the software, or anything. They just, a whole bunch don't ever really seem to work quite right. And it gets really frustrating trying to put together good videos, because I'll have a game that perfectly demonstrates a point, and I don't get to use it. Anyways, as you can see, playing on Trap, Domination Mode, Tier 8 game. And the reason I'm picking this is, realistically, most games you're going to get into are about this build. Some Tier 8s, 7s, maybe a 6 or 2, maybe a 9 or 2. But you are going to see consistently, well, consistent games with Tier 8s in them driving a Tier 7 ship. So while I have games where I ended up in a tier 5 battle with two tier 7s in it and just got to walk all over them, this is a better example overall of how the ship performs in situations you will most likely end up in. So I've driven into the Bravo cap, and right now I can see someone else is in there. So I'm trying to get to the point in the cap, basically in the middle, where that radar range covers the whole cap. If it's a DD, they're going to get spotted. If it's something else, well, they're going to get spotted too. And I'd say I'm just about there based on my 8.7 detection and the 8.49 radar. So, time to pop the radar. And there it is, another Belfast. So, I'm not going to charge around a corner at another Belfast, especially when they've got a Miyoko backing them up. So I slow up and basically decide to shoot at this Miyoko. I look at my loft of my shells, clears the island, and, well, some easy damage to do. There are, however, a North Carolina and Bismarck ahead of me, and you definitely don't want to give battleships any extended time to aim at you when you're in one of these. Pop the smoke, and I start going astern with the rudder full to port to get all my guns around onto this North Carolina, who I'm going to work at with AP. Because once again, a lot of just cruisers at an angled situation like this, you're probably going to use HE. And I am here for a bit, at least until I get all my guns around. Because it's worth trying to start the fire. Now you can see just over my shoulder, the Mayhem went around the corner, put all those torps into the enemy Belfast, and they're dead. So I think it's here that I finally switched to AP, and I guess really realistically, any cruiser with a broadside like this on a North Carolina is gonna shoot at them. Because sub 10K, look how flat those shells travel. And solid damage 6,800 between the split of those two damage totals, and you're gonna watch how quickly I can just eat into this North Carolina. 24,000 total damage. Another volley there, 27, and it just will keep picking up. The Bismarck is too far away to use his hydroacoustic to detect me. There's no real destroyer threat in this match, only three DVs, and one of them spoken for down in the south, another up in the north, so I'm feeling pretty safe. So I'm just going to try to build up the damage. And you can see, like the Fiji, you consistently get between, I'd say, two and 5,000 damage is the average over the entire volley. You see me picking up pretty much that. There's another almost 5,000, and that's when my smoke runs out. I should have been paying more attention to that, but I wasn't quite in this battle. Get the engines going, and just look how quick this ship accelerates. Already up above half speed, 25 knots now, and just pulling away, and it gets you out of trouble really quick. Unfortunately, that North Carolina is not going to be an option for shots for a little bit here because they're behind an island and, well, I'm waiting. I'm going to take some more shots, but I'm driving away because I have to open up. Until I have smoke again, I don't want to sit that close to an enemy battleship. They can overpen me from pretty much any angle. We've got an enemy Mogami. That Miyoko's still here to the north. 
So I definitely have other targets that I can work on and just kind of reposition myself. And I'd say it's a good thing because if you kind of watch what's happening behind me, those battleships are all shooting at me and they've knocked me down to half health. Unfortunately or fortunately, Friendly Mayhem torps that Miyoko as well, finishing them off and I would have loved those side shots. That is pure gold driving these British cruisers. Anytime you get an enemy cruiser, sub 10 kilometers, you're going to work them over, especially if they're not shooting back at you or if you're in your smoke. And that's pretty much what I'm going to do here to this Miyoko. Sorry, Mogami, not Miyoko. Not a perfect shot. They started turning back in, and it's about here I decide. Time to slow down, get that smoke. So I'm watching my speed. I want to see it about 15-ish kilometers. Activate the smoke, because then I'm going to remain in it. And I am going to just fire at this Mogami. AP, AP, AP. Because anytime they're not nose on, I'm going to do massive damage to them. And really that's true of any cruiser. But with these 152s, same with the Russians actually at this time. The 152s, you can just stack up the damage three citadels there. And I'm up to 79,000 damage. I haven't taken too bad a beating. And it is unfortunate that I don't have the heal because I'm sure I could repair probably a quarter of the damage and health I'm missing right now. But either way, it's time to get moving again, push out, and pretty much right away I'm going to end up getting spotted here. And when I first get spotted, I don't instantly go, ah, one of those DDs that was last seen way up in Charlie must have moved closer. I kind of look around for a second going, how is that Colorado spotting me? I'm outside of detection range. And that's what goes through my head here for a few seconds at least. And then I'm like, ah. DD, and I pop the radar, and you're going to see I detect them right away. And that is what I was talking about when we were in the port, about your detection range and the radar, and how doing that full concealment build really is the way to go with a ship, just because pretty much any time you get detected, you blow the radar, and you're going to find where that enemy ship is. So I believe it's right about here. Yep, there it is, that I get detected, and I'm looking around going... Who is it? Oh, no one. And I've been continuing to close the direction I would have been detected from. Pop the radar. There's a Benson. Unfortunately, don't get too much of a shot at him. And I wish I had a line. Had he been somewhere more ahead of me, up in here, maybe this island, I would have hunted him down. But instead, I turn on my hydroacoustic to make sure I don't have torps coming at me, and I'm going to post up again to just start doing damage to this North Carolina. Our team's in a really good position. We have two of the caps. There's no chance they're getting B from us, and none of their ships have slipped in the NPA behind us. So I start working on the North Carolina, firing HE, once again just hoping for that fire, and there it is. That low HE chance, though, Definitely a reason to maybe not use HE as much as you would with other cruisers. But as I continue to work him down, I'm actually going to end up sticking with the high explosive, and it's simply for that kind of consistent damage. I know if I get, I'm going to get a few hundred damage per shell as those shells detonate, even if they don't penetrate the armor. And, well, I should finish them off. I mean, well, that was true until they started healing. Done another 10,000 damage, and that's when I decide to pop the smoke, switch to AP, and that first volley, only 1,600 damage. Still kind of on the border of what I'd expect, you know, that 2 grand to 5 grand I quote. There we go, there's 3,300. One more volley should have him finished off. And there she goes. So next I decide, well, time to go for this Bismarck. And I go back to full ahead. Really no risk of getting shot by them right now where I am. Unfortunately, they get sank. So I take a look around. Colorado, 
EDX Destroyer is the only person to really attack at this point. Start bringing the guns over and you can see they're pretty quick. They're not great, but they're good enough. And at the ranges and engagement styles you should have, more than adequate. Now, part of me wishes we didn't have the point lead we had here, because I'm sure I could have worked this Colorado down for way more hit points than I end up getting here. But I have a ray, first volley off, and it's traveling, looks good. Yeah, about 4,700, fire the next volley, game is over. And here we are with the post battle. 353,000 credits, 3,800 experience, 100,000 damage over 277 shells, a couple kills, a few citadels, a few fires, and ultimately these are the kind of games I tend to have in the Belfast. I really enjoy driving her. She feels a lot like the other British cruisers that I fell in love with. And you do have a little more flexibility with the addition of HE, though you lose torpedoes in that repair party to gain, well, a few extra hit points, the HE, and uh, the radar. As far as team stats go, 1700 base experience, and that ties in with what I thought I would get. And this game, I hope, demonstrates how the Belfast performs against maybe some slightly bigger enemies. A lot of the damage I did do was to the bigger target, as you can see here. A total of 67,000 damage to that North Carolina, which accounted for most of my damage. And that's a tier larger battleship. And because of the smoke, in this case I didn't have to use the radar because I had friendly spotting, I was able to just consistently shoot at them without taking fire back and start racking up the damage. And that is how you have to play the Belfast. You can't afford to take any kind of hits in any of the British light cruisers. If you do, you're gonna die. And end of the day, premium ships are about training a captain, taking money home. I mean, 260, 260,000, sorry, I almost said 267, uh, 260,000 credits, 3,800 experience, and a little extra for the captain. And ultimately, this is great. It helps me grind through all the ships I'm trying to buy. Like right now, I need to buy the Neptune. I can't afford it. So I'm going to be driving all those ships I've got sitting in my port that can help make me money. Tier 7 is a great tier to make money at. When you have an astounding game, you're going to get credits. And you can't really ask more than that out of a cruiser. I think it falls right in line with kind of the Atlanta. It's a little fragile, but you can definitely get the damage out. And I know some people believe that this has completely replaced the Atlanta, and I disagree because ultimately, once again, it's about making money and training captains. The Atlanta trains American captains, so if you're primarily a U.S. player and driving those ships, Belfast doesn't do you a lot of good. However, if you really like the British uh, cruisers and you want a bunch of captains because you're keeping a whole slew of the ships like I am, well, then the Belfast makes a lot of sense for you. Overall, I hope this has helped some of you who are maybe on the fence decide. If you don't know if you're going to like it or not, just go drive the Fiji. It's going to give you a really good idea of what the ship feels like. And it's around for a little while, so you don't have to, you know, jump on it right this instant. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, consider giving me a thumbs up or subscribing to the channel and just help motivate me to continue making these videos. As always, I'm Quicksilver Slash, and I'll have another one for you guys later.